What's up guys, I'm BTC. Ever since Jeff Kaplan mentioned that they're thinking about removing Hanzo's scatter arrow, there's been a lot of talk about what could possibly replace it, but there actually is an ability that was in the early alpha version of the game that would be a pretty good replacement. The other day when I was live streaming, people were talking about the Hanzo Scatter Arrow replacement, and it reminded me of something that I saw at BlizzCon, which was an ability that they introduced for another character, and they decided not to go with it because it didn't quite fit what that character was supposed to do. But, after thinking about it, going back and watching that old BlizzCon footage, it actually does look like it would be a really good fit for Hanzo. Let's take a quick step back though, because ever since this talk of removing Scatter Arrow came up, people haven't really been understanding why they're doing it. So it's not that the ability isn't good enough. In fact, Scatter Arrow is one of, if not the best damaging ability in the entire game. The problem though, is that it's not good enough to actually make Hanzo a more viable character. Now, for those of you that don't know, Hanzo has one of the lowest pick rates in the game. In tournament, he's almost completely not used at all, and even in the competitive ladder, he has one of the lowest pick rates of all the characters. Now, I know some people might think that, oh, I get Hanzo in every single game. It's just not true. Hanzo has one of the lowest pick rates on the competitive ladder. Now, a lot of suggestions that people came up for replacing Scatter Arrow were essentially just other damage abilities. And that's not going to fix it. Again, Scatter Arrow is one of, if not the best, damage ability in the game, so replacing it with something that's a little bit weaker isn't going to fix anything. So we have to kind of compare Hanzo against some of the other characters to see really what's going on with the character. So to do this, we're going to compare Hanzo to McCree and Widowmaker. All three of those characters are basically kind of glass cannons. They're high damage output with not a whole lot of sustainability or defensive capability, right? Like they have some minimal stuff and that's about it. Now, the difference with McCree is that McCree has to stay with his team. He's usually very close to the tanks, he's very close to the healers. So if he needs any kind of support, they're right there with him. Now looking at Widowmaker, she does almost the exact opposite. She doesn't stay with the team. In fact, she's usually way far away from the team kind of doing her own thing. And that's what she needs to do in order to actually be effective. But the thing is, if she gets dived and engaged by the enemy, she has the grapple to just quickly escape from that situation. So she does have a mechanism that allows her to survive. She can't really like contest against the Genji or the Winston that comes after her, but she can at least get away. Now let's look at Hanzo. Well, first of all, he's a projectile based character, which automatically puts him at a pretty significant disadvantage compared to like McCree and Widow. There is going to be a travel time for the arrows, and they also have a drop because of, you know, the fake in-game gravity. So when you aim at something, you have to aim a little bit higher depending on how far away it is. Now, on top of this, he doesn't have the luxury of staying close to his team like the McCree does, so he has to stay far away like Widowmaker. But, he doesn't have the escape mechanisms that Widowmaker has. Instead, the only thing he has is that scatter. And if he misses that, then he's just toast. One of the most important things to do in Overwatch, something that is very commonly overlooked, is to not die. Yes, getting those eliminations is important, but surviving longer is even more important than that. So that's why my suggestion for the scatter replacement isn't just another damaging ability, it's something that would allow him to survive a little bit longer. Now, in my previous video, I suggested that they could give him like a net arrow, right? Where he hits someone and it traps him in a net, very similar to how Junkrat's trap works, where someone gets in it and then they just can't move. They can still attack, they can still use abilities, they just can't move. So that was one of my suggestions. Another one would be to give Hanzo something 
something like Disengage, which is what hunters in World of Warcraft have. Basically, it's an ability that causes you to backflip, and you can jump really far in the air, really far backwards, and it just allows you to kind of space out yourself from whoever was trying to attack you in front. But now let's circle back to that ability that I mentioned at the very beginning of the game. So in the alpha version of the game, Torbjorn had this kind of claw thing, and what he would do is he would fire it out and it would attach to a wall. And anytime someone walked by it, the claw would like shoot out and grab them and then kind of hold them in the area. They could still move around a little bit, but they were basically like tethered to the wall. What this could work for Hanzo is basically kind of the same idea, except it would be a little bit more directional. So when Hanzo fires this kind of grapple arrow, it would hit someone and then it would tether to whatever is basically behind them. So it would continue going or maybe it would bounce in a random direction or something like that, but it would then tether to one of the walls or the floor or something that's in the area. So the player could still move around, right? Like it wouldn't be a full immobilization or a full route like the Junkrat trap is. They could still move around. So imagine that they're just kind of tethered to the wall by some sort of cable or something. So they still have some freedom of movement. They can still attack. They can still use abilities. But the amount of area that they can actually move in is very restricted because they're attached to the wall. Now, as far as how long does this last, well, because it's a very light version of a crowd control, it could actually last a little bit longer. So usually the general rule for crowd control is if it shuts down a lot of stuff, then it has to have a short duration. So for example, a stun lasts for a very short amount of time because you can't do anything. You can't attack, you can't move, you can't use any abilities, none of that stuff. But if a crowd control ability just kind of like slightly limits some of the stuff you can do or slows you down, then it can last longer because it's not as bad as like the stun is. So with McCree, his stun lasts for less than a second. The Junkrat trap lasts for three seconds, so something like this, which still allows you to move around at least a little bit, could probably last even longer. So maybe like four or five seconds where you're basically just kind of like tethered to the wall. Another option, of course, would be to keep the duration a little bit shorter, maybe it's like three seconds, but add a knockback effect to it. So when Hanzo fires it out, he hits someone and then it pushes them away from him. So not exactly like what Lucio has with the boop, because it wouldn't be that much control, but it would push them back at least a little bit to give Hanzo some of that space that he needs. So anyways, I was reminded of that claw ability from the early version of the game and I just thought it would be an interesting fit, potentially give Hanzo some more of that survivability that he needs. So also, if you haven't seen, I have a video with all of that early game alpha footage. It's actually pretty interesting to see how the game changed and progressed during the very, very early stages of development. So I'll put a link to that early alpha footage on screen and down below so you can go and watch it. Also, don't forget to check out my Discord server, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. The links are down below. Thanks for watching. Remember, always, always blame the controller because it's never your fault. Also, special thanks to all my Patreon supporters for helping to make this all possible. If you'd like to see what kind of cool rewards you can get for supporting the channel, check the links on screen and down below.